So we got familiar with the way that modulation is being assigned, but let's look at some of the modulation sources. We have five basic types, and then there are some other types that we can do as well, but I just want to go over the basic ones for now. Since I've already sort of like done a lot of modulation to this source, I think I'm going to go back to global, turn this source off, and get a different source in. Instead of loading a virtual analog source, I think I want to import audio. When you choose import audio, it gives you this nice uh, set of samples, the alchemy samples. You can also go through EXS factory samples. If you want, you can also add your own library as well, or you could drop your sample into the drop zone on the right hand side. So I'll choose pads and digital and choose beautiful sky. And if I drag it over on the right hand side, oops, Take just a second. It's got to analyze the samples that are in there. There we go. Now, right now, at the bottom lower left hand side, it's telling me how it's importing these additive, spectral, additive plus spectral. All of them have a form and element to it. Or I can go into the sampler. I think I'm going to treat this. like a sampler for now. I'll hit import. So when it imports, it's automatically going to try and map it as a sampler. Let me see how well it does. Yeah, it seemed to do pretty well. Now, obviously, on the master output, we do have an envelope that's assigned to that. It's an AHDSR envelope. So it's attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. And I can adjust these a little bit to give our sound a little bit of shape. If I grab the curve, I can make it more exponential or more linear. And lengthen that release a little bit. So that's AHDSR, Attack, Hold, Decay, Sustain, and Release. Now, we only have one available right now because that's the one that was being used for the master volume. But if I wanted to, of course, I can go into this source and if I chose myself a filter, let's say I do something weird like uh, a negative comb filter. And when I select cut off, I can come down here and under AHDSR, I can create a new AHDSR envelope. And you see the number shows up right here. The current envelope that we're looking at is AHDSR2, the one I just created. And it's being triggered with a MIDI note trigger. And if I want to, I can even put it in a sync, put sync points on here so that I can time it to my song, which is pretty awesome. Pretty extreme right now. I'll turn it back a little bit. Oh, I'm on feedback. I need to come down to frequency here. Oh, 
Oh, I'll pull this down just ever so slightly. Pull my hold back. So that's AHDSR. Now what's MSEG? Well, basically what this is, is a looping envelope. So if I get a loop mode, I can choose continuous. And then you'll see that there's little loop points up here. And if I control click, All right. All right, I gotta be careful about snapping Y because basically what you would do is if you were doing something like tuning, you could snap it to 1 12th and then that would be semitones, which would be pretty cool, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, in my edit mode, we have slide and stretch. So if I do slide, it pushes all the points to the right and left. If I do normal, it just moves the one point. Uh, and then I have stretch. The whole thing gets moved around. We also have presets. So if I do, let's say, um, stepped valley. Oh, that's nice, but it's not really assigned to anything. So let's go ahead and assign it to volume. I'm gonna click on volume, choose on, and then go to MSEG2. Oops, I think I have another one. Oops, I did it to MSEG1. <laughs> there we go. And what's interesting is that's actually locked to your DAW. So it's a looping segmented envelope where you can create new nodes just by control clicking. So then we have a sequencer. So if I want to, I can come up to volume, control click, clear modulation. And now I'm gonna add myself sequencer one. And it works pretty much how you would expect. I hold a note. You can hear that it's stepping through the sequencer. So now it's got this value snap, right? What I'm gonna do now is go to my course tuning. And I'm gonna assign my sequencer to course tuning. And what I can do pretty easily now is I can have it musically move around. And what's kind of cool is you can see that it changed to semitones in terms of the depth. It's not in percentage anymore. Now it's triggering every time I hit the key. I might want to turn this off so I can just kind of catch it wherever it happens to be at. I'm also going to turn off the modulation on my volume. Thank <laughs> you.
So there you go. That's basically how the sequencers work. And uh, the one twelfth note was just to snap it to vertical values that I could use for something like pitch. And one twelfth is just one example of what we could do. We could also do sixteenth, or we can turn it off uh, to have it very smooth. And it happens in percentages now. And if you look at depth, our depth is going to be changed to percentage as well. So then when I go to mod map, basically what this does is it gives us a remapping of the values of 0 to 127. So if we had an LFO that was, say, a basic sine wave, and it goes from, let's say, 0 to positive 64 and negative 64, or we could say 0 to 127, what we could do is we can remap uh, how that value takes place And then all these values that used to be linear, 0 to 127, are suddenly not. So if I go to volume and choose LFO1, I can assign mod map 1, and you'll see that the LFO doesn't travel in a smooth line anymore. So the modulation built into this thing is super heavy. And as you start adding modulation to modulation, it's going to be crazier and crazier. This E just basically means edit. So to make sure that we can always look at the target that we're staring at over here on the left-hand side. But that's basically how you assign modulators. And that's a very simple explanation of what each mod modulator is. Now we've already talked about the performer. The arpeggiator is pretty self-explanatory. You have one arpeggiator for the entire instrument, or you can have an arpeggiator for each individual source, and then you have an effects section. So now I think it's time to check out some of the editing. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool, and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramide, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.